Welcome guys to another video of Mortal Medicine. My name is Kedan Bullik and today I will explain to you why Beethoven went deaf. Was it because he played his music too loud? Did he have some sort of disease? Or did he sell his soul to the devil so he could compose music even better, like Paganini did? Well, reality is close to the first two reasons, and here's why. Beethoven wrote this masterpiece, the Ninth Symphony, while he was completely deaf. And also this. It's amazing that someone like Beethoven could overcome this huge hurdle of deafness and still compose music that touches souls everywhere across the globe. His pieces can still be heard across the globe in concert halls, on the streets and in the homes of people. But why did he go deaf? Beethoven's deafness was most likely caused by Paget's disease and lead poisoning. To understand deafness, we first have to take a look at how normal hearing works. Let's take a look at the hearing organ. This organ is located close to your mastoid bone. This organ, located in the back of the skull, consists of a tympanic membrane, which moves the malleus, which in turn moves the incus, and the incus then stimulates the cochlea. Now the part of the cochlea is filled with fluid and tiny little hairs, which move according to the frequency of sound. So, for example, if you have a low bassy tone, like that sound is registered at the apex of the cochlea. In this picture, you can see where the different frequencies are heard. The movement of these hairs, according to the movement of the fluid, cause excitation of neurons by the use of glutamate. Now, glutamate is a neurotransmitter which is excitatory in nature. It excites your neurons. So, if you have a lot of glutamate in your brain, your neurons get more excited. Think, for example, about chips. We all know and love these Frito-Lays or Pringles or whatever. And in these chips, they have this additive called monosodium glutamate. Here you see glutamate coming back again. Now this glutamate, when ingested, it activates your neurons and especially the neurons in your pleasure center, giving you the great taste of crisps. If these weren't added, you would realize soon that, you know, this kind of tastes like shitty cardboard. And this is also the reason, because of this huge stimulation, that when you start eating just one chip, you cannot stop, or it's very difficult to stop, because it keeps tickling you in the right way in your brain. Right. So with glutamate, the signal goes from your hearing organ to your brainstem to the cochlear nucleus. So glutamate causes the signal to go from the cochlear nucleus to the brainstem. From the brainstem, it moves up to the lateral lemniscus, which is like the autobahn in your brainstem. From this lateral lemniscus, the signal goes directly to your auditory cortex, which is located in the temporal lobe. Auditory cortex is a spot in your brain which processes your hearing. Here in this picture we can see a reconstruction of the path this sound and signal of my voice takes into your brain. Pretty neat, right? Share this video with a music lover.
So all this information was not really available in 1798 when Beethoven started hearing tinnitus. Now, tinnitus is a uh, syndrome where you hear a beep on the background of your hearing. It's like, beep. Beethoven did not really have big understanding of this, let alone the doctors. So his reasons for his deafness were mostly superstitious. Actually, Ludwig believed that his deafness sprung from a quarrel with a singer in, I believe, 1789 in Vienna. As we know from his music, like the Fifth Symphony, Beethoven is quite a tempered man. He, he can get angry really quickly. Uh, his grandfather, by the way, was a singer. So he thought that it was in a way bad karma for quarreling or having a fight with the singer that caused his hearing to go bad. Maybe he got cursed fighting someone with the same profession as his grandfather. Well, he became unable to communicate uh, with words and started to use a notebook to communicate with his closer friends, but mostly just stayed in the background, composed and drank wine. This caused him to be more of a social outcast than he already was, because when we look at his life, he was mostly just teaching people, uh, writing com compositions, and sometimes going to saloons to play piano there. And, uh, the problem was that he couldn't hear anybody, and he just pulled himself back because he didn't want to be a burden, and he didn't want anyone to know that he was actually deaf because he's a musician, he's a composer. How can you be deaf when you need to hear your music? It's, it just doesn't work for him. This isolation also brought him a lot of pain. And we can see this in a letter from 1802 to his friend Franz from Regular. He says, I must confess that I lead a miserable life. For almost two years I have ceased to attend any social functions just because I find it impossible to say to people, I am deaf. As you can imagine, being deaf takes a toll on someone's life, especially if everyone expects you to hear perfectly. So seeing no other options for any cures, Beethoven decided to go to Heiligenstadt, a small town near Vienna, in the hope of regaining some of his hearing senses by the use of cold baths and um, essential oils and herbs and spices, but to no avail. This was one of the lowest points in Beethoven's life. He became suicidal and actually wrote a suicide letter to his two brothers. For my brothers, O oh, ye men who think or say that I am malevolent, stubborn or misanthropic, how greatly do ye wrong me? You do not know the secret causes of my seeming. From childhood my heart and mind were disposed to the gentle feelings of goodwill. I was even ever eager to accomplish great deeds. But reflect now that for six years I have been in a hopeless case, aggravated by senseless physicians, cheated year after year in the hope of improvement, finally compelled to face the prospect of a lasting malady whose cure will take years or perhaps be impossible. Born with an ardent or lively temperament, even susceptible to diversions of society, I was compelled early to isolate myself, to live in loneliness when I at times tried to forget all this. Oh, how harshly I was repulsed by the doubly sad experience of my bad hearing. And yet it was impossible for me to say to man, speak louder, shout, for I am deaf. It was virtue that upheld me in misery. To it, next to my art, I owe the fact that I did not end my life with suicide. Well, a few months after Heiligenstadt, after Beethoven was suicidal and decided against killing himself, he went back to work. This is the start of his heroic period, where he wrote pieces such as the Fifth Symphony, the Sixth Symphony, and the beautiful Ninth Symphony, where he rejoices in his grand style. All while completely deaf, a remarkable achievement of sheer will and perseverance. Now great, with the ode of Beethoven out of the way, what has modern medicine to say about his deafness? There are multiple theories for his deafness, but one stands out as the most plausible, namely the one of Paget's bone disease complicated by lead poisoning. Now what is Paget's disease? It's a 
disease where your bone cells have trouble remodeling, causing malformation. The exact causes are unknown, but there are some uh, genetic factors that contribute and also factors from the environment, such as viral infections and bacterial infections that cause genetic mutations. There is no cure, but it can be treated by giving calcitonin, a medicine that reduces your calcium in your blood levels. With less calcium, your bones have less food to grow. Any bone can be affected, but most of the time it, it happens in the skull, the ribs or uh, the femurs. In 2017, Stanley J. Oyset took the time to analyze the remains of Beethoven's skull. Uh, the skull, especially in the part where the hearing is done, over here, showed signs of the disease. There were thicker bone filaments. Be Beethoven's skull was twice as thick as a normal skull. In addition, there were dilated vessels in his petrous bone. Dilated meaning enlarged. The petrous bone is a part of the temporal bone the bone where your hearing organ, your cochlea, is present. The organs are basically inside of this bone. So Beethoven's petrous bone was thicker and also the vessels were enlarged. These enlarged vessels, they kind of point towards um, having high blood flow because there is some sort of mechanism for homeostasis because the cochlea doesn't produce enough sound, there doesn't produce enough signals, so the body thinks there needs to be more blood going towards it. Or the blood vessels dilated because the bone was getting thicker. The exact causes are elusive. And these could have caused his hearing problems, as the nerve could get pinched, uh, causing the signal not to be able to transfer to your auditory cortex. Interestingly, the vestibulocochlear nerve of Beethoven, uh, the nerve responsible for recognizing sound, was atrophied. Atrophy, A meaning not, and troph meaning nourishment. Atrophy, no nourishment. So there was a lack of nourishment, the nerve shrunk down, and this means that the nerve was not able to conduct the signal of the hearing pro properly. Mal so we can see that the skull of Beethoven was malformed in such a way that the petrous bone, the bone where the vestibulocochlear nerve comes from, was thickened. So the bone was thickened, causing the nerve to get impinged and also atrophied. With this atrophy, the signal was more difficult to get through to the part of the brain where the hearing was done. This could explain deafness and tinnitus in Beethoven. But research suggests that this is not the only reason. People looked at Beethoven's body, his kidneys and his liver were pretty much destroyed. His kidneys and liver both showed signs of inflammation. His liver was damaged because he drank, you know, a lot of wine. He loved Hungarian wine. Uh, but his kidneys were also damaged because he did not drink a lot of water, suggesting a loss of kidney and liver function. His joints were also in pain, um, which is common in Paget's disease, giving another additional signal for Paget's disease being one of the reasons that he got deaf. But what actually killed Beethoven was his drinking habit. He loved drinking wine, and especially the Hungarian wine, which was mostly given more taste with lead. And this lead did not help his deafness, because too much lead in your brain and your body can actually damage your brain. So having an atrophied nerve with a petrous bone which is thickened plus lead poisoning basically gives your brain not enough breathing room to do its function properly. So with the drinking his liver was cirrhotic. Liver cirrhosis is a condition where your liver gets damaged so much that there is actually scar tissue forming in it and with the scar tissue the function degrades. Now this malformation and drinking of the wine which leads to higher calcium plus the lead poisoning could be this unholy cocktail which eventually and slowly caused Beethoven's deafness to get worse and worse and worse. In conclusion, the most likely reason for Beethoven's deafness is bone malformation complicated by a high calcium concentration in the blood caused by alcoholic fatty liver disease leading to cirrhosis plus lead poisoning 
did not really help as well. Even though Beethoven was abused by his strong father, drank wine which was laced with lead, was even deaf, he still created music that is beautiful and will touch souls everywhere in this world. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in a modern equivalent of lead poisoning, check out my video on microplastics.